Hello everyone, it's Auntie Nandrew, and we are back with another project from BB Craft. <clears throat> I will put all the products used and the shop site in the description box down below. And for this project, very minimal supply, cute little everyday card or Valentine card, um, just to show someone you care. This is just my practice piece here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and build that up. And to do that, we're going to be using alpha dies. We're going to be using the tree stamp. We're going to need an 11 inch by 4 and a quarter inch piece of cardstock. And if you do not have a bone folder or a score tool, no problem. We're just going to take that sheet, fold it in half. I'm going to use a paintbrush because we're going to be using a paintbrush on the panel for this one. Okay, so there is our base. Then I have a panel that we're going to work on that is cut at three and three quarter by four and three quarter. And I got that a little off. Pull that up. There we go. All straight now. So our panel will work on. I'll go on there. And we're going to be good to go. Also be using the Wisdom Tree inks again. And the tree stamp set. For this one we're going to be using the tree. Which I think does fit on this 3x3 three three block. Yes. We're going to use the teeny tiny heart. So I'm going to put it on the 2x2 two two block. And we're also going to be using the hearts. And I'm going to put that on the other 3x3 three three block. And then we will go with a sentiment here later on. <clears throat> so to start, I'm going to... I have a glass mat, so I'll tilt you over this way here a little bit. If you do not have a glass mat, you could use one of your acrylic blocks as well to do this on, or um, a, a container lid. This is just a shortening container that um, I have to keep water in. could use that as well. So I'm going to pull out some of these blue inks. I'm going to start with this one. And I'm just going to put some of this on my mat here. I'm just dabbing it down. And I'm going to mix a few different colors together for this. Where? There you are. A little Mr. Bottle of water. So I can add a little bit of water to that. Now, I'm not going to want to saturate this paper because it's not watercolor paper. It's just 110 pound cardstock. I grab my paintbrush just to get it damp and I'm going to pick up that color and I'm just going to start brushing back and forth. This is going to be a background, it's going to be a sky, it does not need to be perfect. Right, let's grab this darker blue. While I have this one out, <clears throat> I'm going to take it up around the edges here a little bit. <laughs> These little cubes are nice for this. They don't have much of a surface area there, but it's enough that you can get the edges of your paper really nice. Well, let's throw some streaks direct to paper. Give us a little bit more color even. There we go. Get some of 
of this pretty light green in. And I want some pink in my sky. That's not really showing up on camera very well. But, well, that's because I'm completely off camera back there, but it's right here. It's such a pale color that it's hard to pick up with the bright lights. Nice and light and airy. Not quite that light, Ange. Oh my goodness. And for the green, I'm just going to kind of come in at some angles. So our ground doesn't look completely flat. Let's grab this brighter green. Pull some of that in too. dry paintbrush here. I'm just trying to use it to smush this color out a little bit, blend it out. All right. So at this point I'm going to dry this. I don't really want to get any more water on there. I missed her back. I'm not fumbling what I'm looking for later. Now, you see how that paper started to buckle? I'm not going to panic about that because we can just flip this over and release the tension of it. It still may curl a little bit, but it's going to be easier to work with. There we go. Now we're flattening back out. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the water here, so... <clears throat> Well, I do want to keep it handy for one more thing in case we do need it. Grab my stack of paper here to stamp the tree on. <clears throat> really, Opal? Really? Oh, yeah. Sorry guys, I do not know what the dog's back there choking on. <clears throat> Let's straighten you out here a little bit. There we go. Okay, I pulled out this brown color. Now, I'm not going to go the whole way up into the tree because I don't really want every branch defined. So, I am going to get the stalk kind of heavy. Or the stalk, oh my goodness. The trunk kind of heavy. But as for these branches. I'm just going to kind of hit and miss them. I think I'm also going to put some of this green in along with that brown. Let's 
give that a second for the ink to transfer. A little bit of pressure. I think I waited too long to transfer that. That was my bad. There we go. Now we have our stock. This is a really pale brown. It's very pretty. Kind of a, like an umber, or not an umber, a sienna color. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it and spread that color out a little bit. I'm going to take some here to the side as well. I'm going to give this tree some roots. There's some lines coming out from it. Fill in our trunk a little bit more. All right. Very simple. Nothing strenuous or crazy with that. hearts here and this is where we're going to start building up color I'm going to start light and work my way to darker so I'm going to start with this real pale pink and each time I stamp this I'm going to turn the hearts a little bit. So right now we have this long piece coming down on this side. So that can barely see that right now. That's okay. We just want that in the background. I'm going to go a little bit darker. And I'm going to start shifting my hearts. And one thing I did forget to do while I had that layer color out, I want to start, there's a single heart that comes in this tree set, and <clears throat> I want to start just putting some here and there, like falling hearts, like we have falling leaves in the fall. i also use this just to fill in. Um, we we'll do some second and third generation stamping, which just means there's the first one initially off the pad, second generation, third, and so on. Okay. So now we're going to do that with the darker pink. I rearranged the inks in the box here, kind of in a rainbow order, just for my ease of being able to grab colors and seeing what shades are lighter, what shades are darker, etc. Let's grab our single heart. If you have an issue with um, your stamps not completely stamping, you're not getting a full image, put something to, underneath to pad um, your area, like a stack of paper or a, a, what's really good is a kid's sketch pad, the ones that look like a newsprint um, paper in it. Those are really super good for cushion to give your stamps. Um, 
some cushion and be able to absorb, help absorb the ink into the paper. Now I'm going to miss the red here and I'm going to go to purples. This is super pale and that's okay. This is one that I want subtly. Subtle does not exist in my vocabulary very often. Ask anybody who personally knows me. Subtle is not the first word that comes to mind. Okay, now we're going to go into the purples. Start with this lilac purple. This is one of these things that you could do in any colors. You could build it up as much as you want, as little as you want. Um, there we go. Now we're getting to that where you can start to see what's going on here. up when we're done. Put that over there. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and go die cut our letters for on the base here and I will catch you back in a minute. Okay, so we're about ready to wrap this card up and pull everything together. Now I pulled out this, the sentiment on there that says sending you sunshine. Well I don't want the, I need the sending but I don't want you sunshine. Now you could ink up the whole thing and just wipe off the ink of the you sunshine or you can do a little stamp surgery, whack it in half and you have two different words and then if you need the whole thing back together you can very easily just line them right back up again you get more use out of your stamps. So before I stamp that down I want to put my I'm going to put sending hugs on this one. I like to start at the end and go backwards so I have enough spacing. So I want to put the sending like right up here above the horizon line. I'm going to use the same dark purple that we used in the hearts. Stamp that off and make sure, yep. Make sure I don't have anything funky on the stamp because I've done that before. Give that a second to transfer. There's our sending. Grab my tweezers so I can get a hold of these while I use my little tiny glue bottle. These letters measure about an inch tall by about a half inch wide. Very decent size. Why did I do the H first? I do not know. Oh, yeah. And this is why I like to start at the end. So teaching here. <laughs> so you don't make the same mistake I just did. That S looks upside. 
guess it doesn't matter. H. This is why I like to start at the end because of that right there. So we're going to put our H right about there. Since I've started that direction, I might as well keep going that direction. Oh, a little bit of glue. And if you want this to stand up even more, you could die cut this a few different times and stack them together, stack them up, get a really dimensional sentiment. You could put foam tape behind them. You could take some of your ink and blend over the bottom of it and add some more color to the sentiment itself. I wanted to keep this one nice, light, pastel, and simple, which is, like I said, something I struggle with doing, so this one pushed me outside of my comfort zone, and sometimes we just need that. <coughs> Put a block over that for a minute. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on the back of the card it's, or the panel itself. So we have our pink card base. Let's add some adhesive to it. as best as we can. We'll grab this big block here. Give that a second. And while we're letting that dry, I will let you know that I will have links posted below to the shop and to the products I've used. If you happen to be interested in them. These blocks just, I'm really happy with the blocks. Okay. All right, so there we go. There is our very simple card. And here's our first, the, my first version of it as well, which I added the bird to in a little banner, but I wanted to keep it nice and light and airy. So there we go. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and until next time, take care, and we will talk to you soon. Bye for now.